All right. Hey, everyone. Um, We're back. Uh, We're the Millennials, and I'm Ruby. I'm Pat. And we're joined today by Jason Komodo. Right? I said that right. Komodo! The whole thing! (laughs) Come on, it's okay. (laughs) Dude, I cannot read. I'm telling you, this is... Komodo. I literally just... You want me to stare? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be. I might be looking at both of you or an imaginary yeah, person. That's fine. Right there. Look at this. Um, trust them. Thanks for being on the show, man. Yeah. We appreciate you driving out here. Uh, we met you a little over a month ago at First Friday in the Crossroads in KC Mo. Oh, what a good night and, that was! Uh, yeah, honestly, it was just a great night. And we had a really great awesome conversation. Kind of yeah. And uh, we really want to have you on the show. Yeah. Hear about you, man. I'm excited. Good to be here. No, I'm drinking so much. Can you break the tea now? <laughs> <laughs> Already. <laughs> so, you're back in your studio, right? Uh, the studio that Jason works in, right? Yeah. So on the corner at 18th and Locust, mm-hmm. there's this building that I don't know. I don't know what's been going on with it, but it could be weather or rain. And they paused construction. And the the day it was this morning after I met you guys. Yeah, it was. That's and weird. that was you know that was such a good first Friday. I you know I met some really cool people. Um, chat with my studio owner, uh, Karan, and you know, we're like, this is, it's all going well and you're doing great. I know it's hard, but we're here and I'm going to help you. You have this like inspiring night out and then the next morning, like everyone's texting you. People thought like my building fell down. Oh, wow. You know, so, was like, sorry to hear about Phelps, man. You'll be okay. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and what's look, happening? And yeah, the whole building, well, most of it collapsed. And since it was attached to like our wall, they had to remove it safely. It does not look any better. <laughs> have you been by there recently? I haven't, no. I mean, no. to people that are going to go out there, it looks great, you're safe, go there. Um, but it's just like bars and... Yeah, I saw pictures on Instagram right after it happened. janky, maybe? Well, there's a tarp. So the tarp... There's a tarp. That okay. corner has always been a, not the best looking corner in Kansas City, I'll say that. It was getting better. <laughs> and now it's a pit. We keep talking about like Parks and Rec and stuff. And, like, <laughs> that's how it starts. Don't fall in the pit. Don't, man. don't fall in the pit. Don't fall in the pit because of, you know, so when we met Jason, we were we were at the st- we were there for first Fridays, and um, you popped into his studio, mm-hmm. and you guys struck up a conversation. So that was cool because you know we there's not always people in the back going through the studio. We I know we want to start doing that more. I like yeah. engaging more that way, which was really funny. And what was your friend's name? That was with you. David. D- David. David. I mean, just out of nowhere, I just heard like, so "What are you doing?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> that, that you're that like was awesome, uh, yeah. Because, I mean, my work at least like slightly resonated with with you guys. And it's that's so kind cool. Of, yeah, it was cool. It's about you can go through a assembly line of First Friday and have nothing, and talk about nothing, and that was. Yeah, we walked into. We were walking around. Uh, Mark gave us a tour of the studio, and we had already walked by our office once, and I saw that kind of a few things just peeking through the doorway, and I didn't see you that first time. So the second time when I saw you sitting there working on the floor. I went in there and introduced myself and said, what are you doing? Yeah, it was it was so funny. I didn't know you all knew each other. And I know we were all going through the same thing. We all put out a lot of body heat. When we, I, I thought we were all just sweating our asses off. Yeah, and hot. like, because we all walked out and by a fan. And I saw you guys. And then I went back in the Mark studio uh, with you with you and your friend. And I was like, yeah. man. I was like, I just met these really cool guys. But we put off some heat, man. I am sweating my face off right now. And then I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, let me text him. Yeah, it was. The first thing out. I noticed was the big size VHS tapes on your wall Dude, that you could see right through the doorway. So cool. And it was just so interesting to me. I had never seen anything like it in my life, even though that's a lie because I, that was like something that I saw every single day of my life for the longest time, yeah. <laughs> but just in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that blew my mind when I saw that. You know, that, that started off as actually, like, I couldn't think of, uh, like, groomsman gifts for my friends. Like, I wanted them to be unique, and I wanted them to, like, say something about my friends. So I started oh, thinking, so I was cool. like, oh, maybe, you know, I can relate a movie to each one of my friends. And we do a thing at work where you make, like, kind of faux canvas by, mm-hmm. you have, like, a foam cork. Oh, this is boring. I'm, I'm almost sort of talking about work. <laughs> it's good. Dude, this is cool. You have, like, poster board foam and then a cam, then, like, a fake canvas foam on one side and what you do is you print on the canvas foam side largeprinting.com print on the canvas foam <laughs> side you flip it and then you you cut these little notches so you can roll it over 
tuck these corners in and it just looks like a canvas. Mm. But what I thought of was printing along the side and then if, if you could extend that because it, there's some there's some math to like notching and rolling and I, I trust the smarter people than me and um, I, it was funny because when I first made them like let's just see how big we can do it and they are obnoxious man. <laughs> you saw one Large, of the huge ones. Pretty. All my friends that I gave one to I'm like give me a picture when it's up at your house. I got like one picture. I'm like let me guess basement and the yeah basement by the TV where yeah all right man that's cool. It was a biodome. Oh nice. Yeah. You say on your you know what I'm talking about right? Uh, I don't remember the big Bio one. Oh, both of you, both of you, both of you don't know Biodome? Biodome? No, I know the movie. Yeah, I'm familiar with the movie. Oh, it wasn't up. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I, you know, I, I, like, I just didn't remember seeing. I it struggle, there. and I still do. I mean, there are, there. I'm not trying to mass produce like other people's, you know, tapes in general. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can as like custom work, but I'm not trying to like. I have a million yeah. of these mini Conan things. Like, what if that guy, it's some Italian dude, he has passed away, but if someone hits me up and they're like, bro, that's so-and-so's painting and so-and-so's thing and you owe us something, I don't want to go through that. Mm. <laughs> um, it will like, happen no. when it's uh, when you're already successful. But, you know, yeah, I've that's had, true. I, I had some guys putting a Keep horror creating. movie together that, you know, their idea is, they're like, you know, if it's a dissolved property... You're like I have a ninja, I have a ninja the Wonder Boy. What is that? Nobody knows what that is. Yeah, is that a it's, thing? It is. <laughs> okay. It is, but it's it's like a it's like they condensed a an anime show into a movie for Americans, and they oh man, and they dubbed it, and they had this American band like make this really literal soundtrack. Like, I'm not gonna. Oh man, you we'll link to, it. Uh, ninja the Wonder Boy, <laughs> bro. Lincoln. Tablet thing. Ninja. Link in the, the, the description Wonder below. Point. Uh, but they're like, you know, if we can find all old like horror movie properties, you know, um, mm. some, it's it, you can you could say it's similar to sampling, you know, with like music. If you sample, yeah, you have to keep uh, the, it within a certain time. If you're altering fair, stuff, fair use, you have to alter stuff a certain percentage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't, I'm not. Don't quote. Me, don't quote. Me, don't, <laughs> don't really listen. to This me, is not legal me. advice. Okay, this um, is just what we think. But I couldn't really stop, you know, because all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, this one would look great, and this one would look great, and. Uh, this is my dad's favorite Christmas movie. I should mm. make him that. Um, but then it started getting into, like, you know, the ones that really stick with you, that are real personal, like, you know, the burnt tapes, you know, mm. the recorded mm-hmm. VHS with everything's crossed out. I have, like, four Supermans. And or when I made the mistake of uh, my mom had League of Her Own, and that was, like, her movie, and she was getting into softball, and I recorded over it with X-Men cartoons oh. on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh oh, and it's it's one of those things where you're you know when you have processes Sorry, as, as an artist like at least for me you surround yourself if people have that wall of knickknacks um, mm-hmm. that make you feel good like oh, I I want to look at this or listen to this or watch old movies but you know part of that can that can be the work itself because why is it important to you mm-hmm. why is it around why can't you throw it away and I think that's kind of something I'm confronting maybe a little bit. That's interesting because one that of the is, questions I wanted cool. to ask you was about why you chose the type of art that you do. Mm-hmm. You know, in a way, you're already answering it. That, that yeah. question. I mean, I do a lot of stuff. I don't, you know, and similar when you're in school, like I did some miniatures, and like Jason's the miniature guy. I'm like, I don't want to be just. The, I don't want to be just like the VHS <laughs> or the miniature guy because I mean, I think you just make what you feel like making. And at least for me, you keep making it. You don't stop. Mm-hmm. And then you ask yourself later on, and you connect the dots. Yeah. Because at first I'm like, just keep making VHS tapes. Yeah, like, like I whatever. like it. And then you know, all of a sudden, like maybe someone <laughs> that happened to me uh, a couple weeks ago get a text from a guy at like midnight, which is inappropriate, but I invite it. <laughs> if it's about <laughs> like late. it was just like, hey, something something Conan, and I was like, what? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I threw in. Got this guy, this Conan tape. No, 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 no. The book? Did you see the book? Yeah, I saw yeah, the book. Yeah, the book. so the book was basically like the tape wrapped around cardboard. So it's like the pages itself were like that. And then I wrapped a thing around it and made a book. And But it was also funny because when I met the guy, I, I'm going on and on about Conan the Barbarian for like... <laughs> Oh god, like maybe at least ten minutes because it was. It, I was like, it was like my Star Wars when I was a kid. You know, everyone was uh-huh. watching Star Wars. I was watching Conan. You know, uh, if it had a sword, I was I was into it. And like he just finally, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that since I was a kid. This is this is for my friend for a present. I was like, man, why should have stopped me, man. <laughs> Super nice guy. Uh-huh. He's in the band Wick and the Tricks. 
Mm. Wake and the Tricks. No. I haven't heard of them, but that's a cool uh, band they were, name. They were good. They were super good. Super nice guy. We're going to have cool to check man. that out. What do you think about Highlander? Oh, bro. Highlander. I wish my I wish the cover looked a lot better, but mm. yeah. I mean, bro, Sword. Yeah. Sword movie from the 80s or 90s. Yeah, I feel like if they're going to remake I a movie or restart a franchise, this should be that shit. Oh, okay. Because I did guys, not like the way it ended. What are you guys yeah. talking about? <laughs> some old hey. night, some old nineties <laughs> action stuff. Uh, house guests, Sinbad. We get. We'll, we'll make. We a have list. a list. No, I anyone know. can make a list. There'll be things we'll be able to be like Jason. You what? I'm you didn't know this. I, I don't know. Where are you from, Jason? Um, yeah, man. Kind of. Well, I've I've always lived a little outside of St. Louis. Like I and I've almost. It's it's weird because at this point in Kansas City, I've almost spent like my life has been in three places. So, North County, like Florissant, St. Louis. Mm-hmm. until i was like 12 and then saint charles until you know there's that weird period of like college and you're always going back home yeah and then here since 2007 2007 yeah i'm a, i understand that i feel like i'm at the point in my in my life i've lived here long enough where when people ask me where i'm from i just say kansas city now mm. even yeah. though it's not my hometown per se but I feel like I'm from Kansas City. You're like, this is my home now. I know it sounds cooler to say I'm from St. Louis. Like, when I when I went off to college and I, I had a class with a friend. Yeah. I went first in the class. And I'm like, I'm from St. Charles. And then she went. She said, I'm from St. Louis. I was like, ah. That's <laughs> like, nobody cares I'm from St. Charles. And you say from St. Louis. They're like, right, right, right. Cool, that can cool. mean so many things. That's cool. <laughs> That's how people are with Chicago. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Chicago, right. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Her tindy. laughs> oh. That's hilarious. I would say it's okay to do that in Kansas City because the culture is more or less the same throughout the city. I mean, there's like inner city and, like, suburbs, but... Yeah. But you know what? When I get asked where I'm from, I don't ever think they mean here. Whoa, whoa! They're always wanting to know what my ethnicity is. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. they're like, no, but where, where you, are you? Where are you really from? 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 Yeah, like, Do are you? Tan you well? I'm yeah. get it. Where's well? Where are your parents from? And I'm just like. <laughs> I play that From game Kansas. all the time. Why did you do that with anybody, though? So why'd you do that with me? Press, press the shit yeah, but, out of me, man. But where because are you only go back to my grandma, and then it's it. My grandpa, and then it's Italy. You know? Yeah. Oh. Stupid people are stupid. But the people that do it to me, the only people that do it to me are always Indian dudes because they think I look Indian. So they're like, "Where are you from? Where are you from, brother?" <laughs> like, dude, I'm from Kansas. Yeah, but where, yeah, where are your parents from? <laughs> exactly. Like... <laughs> like, they're also from Kansas, dude. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, but your grandparents, <laughs> they're from Kansas too, bro. They were born in Southwest Kansas. <laughs> like, okay, but what country were they from? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm Mexican, bro, if that's what you wanted to know. Like, <laughs> you're just trying to ask me what I am. I know, like, what the heck? But it's always Indian dudes. It's hilarious. So just ask. <laughs> I want uh, someone to press me just once. Like, really press is, me. Yeah, but yeah. where you're, you know, where, yeah, where like, you're from, bro. But, like, in yeah. Europe, where? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a new thing, though, like, with 23 and me. Are you Once everybody you? has that, it's going to be like, where are you from? Uh, 3% Parisian. I don't know. You done? You, you ever done, like, a little swab? I haven't. I want nah. to. We should do it. And do it if you do want. The they should results. sponsor us. If they sponsor us. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is not an ad. Anyways, <laughs> everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're here with Jason. Yeah. I'm Pat. I'm Ruby. And we'll see you after the break. Thanks. I got to so bad. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I'm Pat. Oh, I'm Ruby. Thanks for joining us. And Jason, we're here <laughs> with our guest, Jason. That thing you do. I think I thought you were swatting it. I keep... It's not a bug. It's not a bug. <laughs> It's to help us. Uh, it helped me as an editor track the um, audio, audio and video. It's a nightmare really. to do it otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, with lining everything up. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw like someone shooting like a band, like a music video type situation. You know, it had it had to be so annoying from the band because he kept being because he wanted the B roll and all the angles. <laughs> They're like the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Torture. It's movie magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely movie magic. It's an magic. illusion. I realize how much <laughs> movie magic it is. We made a music video this year. Yeah, we did. Um, awesome. With the country music band. They were great. Backroad Story. Yeah. 
Okay. okay. But yeah, it was definitely one of those things where you're, you're just you're sitting there and you're like, okay, do it again, <laughs> like redo it. Like, <laughs> let's cool. try it different this way. Video is a whole nother. You know, sometimes four seconds, five seconds is like a couple hours of work, and you know, ten people. It's nuts. Yeah, I, I, especially like back in school, I always thought it was so unfair when because we would do we would crit photo and video together. Yeah, and there's so it's so easy to critique like video, man. You know, like there's so much you could start like talking about. Like I didn't like the music or the sound, <laughs> or there was some weird background hum. What <laughs> type of mic were you using? <laughs> and we, you know, half the time half the photo majors didn't do shit. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> to anything to like two nights before like it's graffiti and it's like language and not everybody sounds like a valley girl i just do that sometimes but it was always unfair this film there's just there's just so much more to think about like a moving mm -hmm. image as opposed to a still one but i think that's that's with at least with photography with, why i love like film and video i mean i i like a long narrative and i'd like shoving that into like the smallest space you can as well it's fun challenging i guess yeah, what I really like about film is is or in features in particular in shorts is just I do like that storytelling. I mean, I definitely know the picture's worth a thousand words for sure. Uh, there's some beautiful photography out there, but I like narrative. You know, I, I like, like narrative too. I, I like watching intense moments between people and just understanding the human condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that in storytelling and on screen. I honestly, I think I love both photography and video equal, like film and video. I think so. Even as a photographer, I, I mean, I, I'll... I love, I, I just love that video or f like film is, um, it's just like an extension of photography. Like you still have to have that artistry, that composition, like you have to be technical, but mm -hmm. it's just like a step further and then you get to add sound. Mm. So that's yeah. that's why I like it. Um, but I love photography. Like I like taking photos. I like developing photography. Like I like, I like all of that. But videos, I don't know. It's I don't know which one I would choose. Honestly, one over the other. Yeah. I I started off as a photographer. Pat yeah. Pat was telling me the other day. He was like, I all I, I remember you in high school. You just walk around with your camera, like yeah, taking we pictures. Went to high school together and. Uh... I felt like there is a long period of time where every time I saw her, she was just wandering around campus with her camera. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> she'd be like, taking pictures of stuff. I'd Filming be like, bags, of what? And she'd be like, I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll like, find it. I don't know. That's good. No, I'll that, know that's when I see it. Angle. That's a great angle. I'll know when I'll see it. You know? But well, that is one thing that's super duper but it's important hard. in both is, like, at least from my perspective, and mm -hmm. I'm not a photographer by any means, is definitely the angle and the framing of a shot. Oh, yeah so important it is also important and then you start adding just like all the logistics and technical part of it and it it can be overwhelming like video no, yeah, is video is dope but we've been on a we've been on a, a learning journey for the past few years just mm -hmm. trying to figure out the whole video space too um i don't know i feel like I don't know. I think the creative scene in Kansas City is pretty great that there's a lot of people around to like collaborate with and that have really yeah. that have really cool ideas and don't do really cool stuff. Far. You could throw a pebble and like are you in a band? Are you an artist? Do yeah. you do something creative? Do you, do you have a podcast? Yeah, do you, you have, have a podcast? podcast? <laughs> That's not what I, you know, I, it's, and not to crap on like places I've been or came from, but, um, you know, I think St. Louis is really spread. Uh, mm. and, and what I loved I've never been. here was how like compact it felt, you know, like how how easy it was. I'm like, you know, I'm not like trying to. Every single person I meet is, you know, are you yeah. in a band, do you bartend, do you do something <laughs> creative, what do you do? Do you have tattoos? Do you have a tat? Like for sure. Um, I just it was, it was a, it's a nice community out here, especially for artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it you know it, there's opportunities out here like you just can't find. You can't find anywhere else, and it's it's easy to find like hungry people that are willing to like take a risk or try something creative, even just to like just to get out of the house for a second. A lot of people are willing. To get, yes, what are you what are you doing? Can yeah. I be involved? Can I go? Can you need to stand there. What? Hold. Yeah. Whatever. Call me. Please, yeah. Please call me. And when I was in St. Charles, I mean, man, and I could sum it up. And it's this is nothing against this band or my friends that requested this, but like St. Charles felt like, hey, Jason. Do you want to go to the Breaking Benjamin concert? And then, like, do you want to paint the album to the Breaking Benjamin thing on my wall? That's nothing against 
that type of genre, but like I I wasn't getting pushed out there. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't. And when you know when your friends have different hobbies, you're not continuing that conversation. And I I felt I I saw my life at one point. Oh. I was like, dude, you gotta you gotta go back to school. You gotta do something. And I had a friend that came here right Respect. after KU. Came here right after KU and was like, dude, just just come out here, man. Just live in our basement and. That didn't happen right away. <laughs> I lived in some weird... Man, I moved so much when I came out here, but... Uh, That's you... something to be said for that. Yeah. Um, because I, one of one of the questions I want to ask you is, how did you get into kind of being an artist and like being a creative... Like knowing that you're going to be a creative person? Well, I mean, I, you know, and I don't know if this is for everybody, but for me as a kid, it was like, it's either MBA, right? And mm-hmm. I stopped growing. That obviously didn't happen. <laughs> Like, see, the NBA, but art was always there. Like, I felt like art was always, like, the, all right, Jason, give math a shot. You suck at math. That's okay. You have art. And the NBA, right? Mm. Uh, you know, give, <laughs> give creative writing a shot. Ah, you're good at creative writing. You're maybe not good at this. That's okay. You have art. And the NBA. <laughs> Possibly a pro wrestler. You know, I don't know. Like, um, I'll just say I'm old just a good. It's not just a good outlet, but it's, it's you know, it, it man, it makes me think of, like, uh, I talked to my grandma earlier. Her, you know, when she was watching me at the point when I was a kid, like bringing reams of paper from Feld Chevrolet and being like, you know, just go to town. Like, here's some crayons. Mm. And having my brother as well was always really big because yeah, you throw her under the bus. You work out. You use an office supplies like that. <laughs> Damn, Doris, on the radio. Sorry, Doris. <laughs> I don't know if Feld Chevrolet. It was for the kids, yo. Yeah, it was so for the kids. For the kids. <laughs> Pat, what are you doing, bro? Uh, <laughs> hey, you said she's it, a man. call. My grandma's nice, but she throws fingers, man. She'll do it. Uh, I don't know, man. Like it's it, it's it's always been there. You know, you're always creative. And then it gets to that point in high school. I was like, uh, I'm not gonna be in the NBA. I'm, <laughs> I'm barely starting when I play basketball. You know. And then you're like, well, if I'm gonna be an artist, you have to be a designer because that that's like what everybody I felt like was pushing me towards. You know, mm. like, oh, I you want to be yeah. an artist? Yeah. What I mean? Well, you have to be a graphic designer because everything else. Obviously, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, you don't make money doing that. And like the art, that conundrum. The art institute it. itself. When I when I visited it and looked at it, I was like, "Well, this is some weird fantasy. I can't do this." Obviously, what you go here just to make art? Like, where's the track? Where's the weight room, man? How do different? I how do I run track and be an artist here? That can't happen. Would it be different if they put it in a different context? Like, become a graphic designer. And that will allow you a career that's flexible so that you can pursue other <laughs> art in your free time and have something that you can earn money on. I don't know. Would man. it matter? Would it be different? Would you feel differently about it? I think it matters if you care about that type of art. Like, well, you know th- what I'm saying? And if that's what you're trying to put out. And I, and I think most people giving you True. advice don't know what that feels like mm-hmm. because True. it's it's a field that's always changing. I mean, dude, I think yeah. about like... Especially, especially trying to go through design, because because what I regret, I mean, I, I don't regret, because I, I was a graphic design major for a long time. Yeah. Uh, when I moved out here, I was a design major for two years. It it, it taught me a lot. It was great. It almost killed me. <laughs> uh, it also led me to switching to photography, which is which was a very healing, amazing experience. But like, I mean, everything I felt like everyone was pushing you there at some point because what do That's these awesome. other fields look like? You know, and I'm learning like, it's it's funny how quick things change because I'm I'm learning Cork Express. In like Adobe PageMaker, right? What? Do you even know what those are? No, of course not, because because mm. nobody because it was like right when like Creative Suite's coming out. Mm. When I moved out here, it was like CS2 was like the thing. And like, what do you what do you do with all those years of school? And like, I don't because yeah. if it, if it was stuff towards like a creative art, I'd still I could still do so much with it. And I wonder how much is it by design that people advise you to pursue stuff like that, or is it the fact that they are they themselves are the type of people who work in those nine to five jobs every day. They just expect other people to do it also. I'm just curious. I, I about think that. certain I think certain fields are hard to gauge yeah. is kinda of what I was getting at. Like I mean mm. because that, that Adobe Page maybe Cork Express is one thing, but think of how much more accessible design and photography is to everybody. I mean yeah. I, I have friends that are so successful at like maybe wedding photography or doing this that no no formal training, just you yeah. have money, you have you have the money to get a good camera. Yeah. Just time and, and the, I and the balls and the balls and the patience and the the sensibility to go shoot a wedding. I mean, there's money out there, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But I mean, meanwhile, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm like seventy grand in debt and yeah, like 
not even Life Touch will call me back. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you don't even need to train me. I'll bring my own camera. I have a computer. Let me take pictures of the babies at the hospital. Please. Something. Just put a camera in my hand, man. Oh, yeah. I, that's a struggle, dude. Yeah? That's been such a struggle. Such a struggle since graduating. But that, that you know, that journey, that struggle, I think leaves mm. everybody hungry. Which yeah. is why we're all, everybody's ready to jump on something. Yeah. Like, you're doing what? You do, that's why when we were getting ready to leave that first Friday, I'm like, come on, well, you guys do something. We all do something. Mm-hmm. Like, let's get together and... And do stuff. Yeah, we talk about this all the time. That is the one of the struggles of the, I would say, millennial-ish do you consider yourself a millennial? Let's talk about that. I don't know, man. I mean, all those words. Are made I think up, so because. I don't know. Do you, yeah. Do you, <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. I was, I was born in '84. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm 30. Oh my god, I'm 34. You're 34. 34. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, and it's fine. I mean, you bring up that. I mean, and that stuff to me, it's all like nostalgia. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I can I I remember getting out of that of three ninjas with my brother, just not just practicing karate in the hallway and not caring about anything i mean do you remember when you please tell me yeah I this is gonna be another yes. one of those so you do i know i even remember where i watched it for yes, the first that's time it was in about, missouri man. of that's all things my i had a family member that family members that moved over to harrisonville and we came to visit them as my first time in missouri i was little and we watched that movie halloween <laughs> like yeah i remember and that you know that kind of what we were talking about i mean when you're processed you're like this is so important to me like i could think because I have, like, a Ninja Turtles tape. And I'm like, man, I remember my mom taking me to Schnucks. And me being like, mom, please, let me get the Ninja Turtles tape. And I remember, like, getting the tape and all the times you watch it. And you can't get rid of it. It's important. It's an important object. So what do you do with those things, you know? Like, I have these boxes that you, when you move, you just keep bringing them and keep bringing them. And do you put it away, give it to someone, or maybe, like, glorify it for a little bit? I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I have a recent I hot like take it. about... That nostalgia hot feeling. Hot, hot, hot. Is that that, I started watching. I started watching some old movies that I really liked recently, and I started watching basketball the other night. And I just I can't. <laughs> Those believe, guys are great. Like I'm a fan. It, the comedy is hilarious, mm. but like the movie, like the film itself is garbage. Like they, they did have a good. They did no. spend a lot of money on it. Uh, so all the scenes are very authentic. They have like what appear to be real scenes in like arenas and on nfl fields and stuff like that Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so the production was on a high point but like for some reason like it just looks like it's just not high quality (laughs) film and uh, what uh, is that from like 98 98 yeah 20 years ago but my point is that it's uh, it's amazing what could pass for a movie back in like the 90s oh, uh well. and my it just i guess that what i why i bring that up is because i compare that to what in my mind i would like to see on film and it's like so much far and above far away and above that what used to just be a pass passable for a movie back in the 90s i think there's a really important documentary movie called like uh, electric boogaloo that's electric specifically boogaloo. about uh canon films the company Canon Films, mm. you know what I'm talking about? No. I don't, I've heard the name of it. I, don't, I can't recall when, when if I've seen it. When we grew up in the 80s, I mean, if like MGM was putting out maybe 10 movies in a year, mm-hmm. they were putting out like 30. They put out like Cyborg, Over the Top, every Charles Bronson, Chuck Norris movie. Oh, but yeah. also it was, it was by some, some foreign dudes that didn't know a lot about American culture, but are also telling you what American culture looks like because mm. they are right putting there. out... If you looked at maybe 50 films went out in a year, they put out like 35 of those. Yeah. So when, when you're growing up watching these things, I'm like, I guess that's what hippies are like. I guess that's what people from here are like, according to... Yeah. <laughs> to these two dudes. Like, over the top... Dude, I mean... All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we're going to go to a break right now. Hopefully you like this jam. Uh, you're listening to the Relinials. Jason, you got it. <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, you're here with the Millennials. Uh, I'm Ruby. I'm Pat. Jason, and, and we're here with Jason. Um, you're cracking me up, man. We've been talking about a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a that was hilarious off air. Oh my goodness. You guys um, will never know. But yeah, I did want to ask you about. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about your thoughts on your current KC art scene and like if you're working on any projects currently, any big projects or any events. Yeah. Um, me personally, like I, 
I have like a bigger show that I know I want to work towards where cool, like, cool, cool, cool. you know, I really want to mess with the fact, I, I really want to take advantage of where I'm working right now, largebooty.com, um, <laughs> where I, you know, I want to include like floor graphics, right? Like, like, you know, not, stuff yeah. coming off the wall yeah. onto the floor. You know, I want to have, cause that, you know, everything you talked about when you thought about that movie you know, like, I want to somehow include everything, you know, like, it's not just staring at this thing, it's like the, the, the music, the feeling, possibly the smell, that'd be weird, mm. that'd be weird, I'm not going to try to do smell art, like, you know, uh, <laughs> but I want it to be a little, just I a mean, little more, that's interesting. you know, uh, you know, possibly integrate some music and some, like, live performance, because I, I there's a lot of things I like doing, and yeah. I, I think art, it's easy to get, easy, easy to get pigeonholed. Yeah, you know, like I, I really did some is. stuff, with, and I love working with miniatures. I, I do do a lot of miniature work, but it doesn't mean like hey, Jason, you're a miniature artist now. Like, mm-hmm. what kind of miniatures do you work? I'm like, bro, I did this other thing, man. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I mean, I shoot a lot of, I do a lot of medium format film, um, oh, pri- cool. primarily film, uh, and some things you talked about earlier. I mean, I love the like anxiety of like not knowing if it went well. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think mm, I think that's right. You know, I think that'll look good. I mean, I have I have a role right now that. Uh, from the beginning of the summer, you know, that I still haven't finished. I got like three more exposures. And when you're broke, it's fun. Not fun, but the anxiety is even more because uh, some of the film I'm buying is like 20 something a roll. Oh, dang. Yeah. So you're you know? like, and because waiting I'm for the shooting, right moment. Because I'm shooting a two and a quarter, I get like 12 exposures. So if you break that down to money, I mean, man, you know, that's like a bean burrito per exposure. And that is. Mm. Bell. Yeah, <laughs> bean burrito per shot. It's a good way to think about it. Um, as far as the art the scene, economics you know, of I film, get, art can be tribal, and I do get very sometimes like I'm only going to certain galleries. I can't speak to everything that's going on, but uh, mm-hmm. at least where um, I have a studio in the back of the Volps Bastille Gallery, and they've been doing a couple more group Super shows cool. and uh, some like you know like live performance in the middle of it. Oh, nice. Uh, there was this realize. really cool show in October. No, that is such a lie. Um, man, maybe it was May, but he had like mini like installations where you could press a button that would activate it. Mm. And then he had music halfway through it. Oh, um, wow. I, you know, maybe as far as the scene right now, people are getting a little more experimental on, you know, what you, maybe not what you can get away with, but, Maybe what people... That's great, man. We went to that uh, during the Open Spaces KC. Yeah, I went to the Nick Cave. So that... That's a good point. I mean, that was that was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. That, I felt like that was super experimental. I mean, I th- I think that was a pretty big risk. He activated, risk. He like, activated the whole space. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's kind of part of it, you know? Like, I, I'm... Part before. of me is I like clean art that's framed and a lot of space to breathe and everything's white and clean but then i also like some wild stuff where everything's activating yeah and you don't know what's going on man there was some there's some moments uh during that show where he even let other people perform music and you know you never know how people are going to react or how they're going to take it and i you can see when people are into it and then when people are like i don't know where the fuck we just walked into yeah, like, <laughs> did we leave feel like we got to walk all the way around because we started walking yeah. in our place you know they'll get back by that bathroom area and then like now there's just people hanging out in here just look around and nod and keep walking and yeah that'll happen but uh i don't know i mean art art's always changing you know it's it's mm-hmm. it's it changes every year man because there's stuff going on i'm like okay that's big now i didn't, I didn't like scanning qc codes where it'll act it'll if you look at it through your phone all of a sudden you're you're you know what I'm talking like about? Like the those? AR stuff? I don't, augmented, I don't know what that stuff augmented is. Augmented reality yes. type thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the barcode where it's a square. A QC yeah. code. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. QC yeah code, like yeah. you'll you'll download one of those and all of a sudden this pedestal it has all this 3D art that someone's done. Like stuff like that's going on. Like silent disco stuff yeah. only like with your okay. eyes. That so are, are you saying maybe more like installation art? Getting into more installation <laughs> art? Installation performance. Just uh, I don't know people get that's my there. favorite that's my it gives favorite me thing. And, it, and it gives me hope to be like all right jason you can get you know get a little weird you know like especially because you don't know, know like when two random dudes might walk by and mm. be like well that speaks to me yeah you know that's super cool because you make things in a vacuum man like i am it's true i am isolated in this tiny little room listening to records like making vhs tapes and gluing little bushes onto <laughs> some train model like i don't you know i don't always know what i'm doing do you, go, um, do you go into a flow state when you, like, 
Do you lose track of time when you, oh, absolutely. When you do your absolutely. art? Absolutely. Isn't that the a- best? Absolutely. In a good way and a bad way. Sometimes I get oh. very distracted in there. Like, I'll start making music and I'll get obsessed with some tiny little loop. Like, Jason, it's 11. Yeah. What have you done? All you did was rearrange everything in your studio. That looks better there. Move that there. That looks good. I'm <laughs> yeah. good. There's this a process, good. man. I know the feeling. I'm good. I know what I'm doing. And then you're like, you did nothing tonight, bro. You have two nights a week to cut out to your studio, which that's tough, man. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. like, I've had a studio in my house and I've had a studio, like, externally. Yeah. And I don't know, man, I don't know. I kind of, I don't know. There's somewhere in the middle where it's perfect. Uh, like, I, there was a point where I, I live in the top floor of a warehouse. Yeah. And then my studio and our art space was in the basement. So it was Super nice cool. because it's like, and if you have, having roommates that are artists would help because my, my one friend was working Garmin Monday through Friday and I'm ready to like part time, like this, I need to kick back and yeah. watch all my TV shows and eat all my stuff before I really feel like working. And he's already got like a respirator on and he's graffiti and stencils. I'm like, I'm so lazy. Damn it, Adam, <laughs> man. Like slow down. <laughs> But it was great. That did help me. Um, you know, because I, I think when you graduate, it's like, you know, maybe someone lights a fire. Or like a lot of people, man, they don't know where to go, what to do, and they don't make they don't make anything. No, they don't. Like, uh, I'm like, hard. oh, you're okay, you're a nurse now, and you're doing this now. And I'm like, I'm still, like, at least, like, pushing for it. Trying. I mean, I mean you have to. Otherwise, why, why do I owe 80 grand? What's that for? Yeah. What's that about, man? Like, it's got to be for something besides oh, peace of mind. I don't even want to get um, into student loans. Right <laughs> yeah. I understand what you're saying about sitting there. I do. I run into the same things while I'm video editing. When I'm just, like, doing something for, like, hours, it feels like. And I'm just like, oh, my God. What have I done with my time? What did I do here? But it's so fun to lose track of time uh, when you're doing something like that. Like, my, for yeah. me, I, I do that when I cook. I think that's, like, also when I paint. When I paint. I say, is that a good thing when you cook? Lose track I, of time? Just like make everything. <laughs> so I'm like, bad oh, burn man. Now. Burnt tortillas. Uh. Lose track of time. No, I just go into like a really happy like, oh, I'm just, I don't care about time. I think more. I don't think I, do I lose that. track of it. I dream that I'm a good cook. You know, it doesn't work. <laughs> then, uh, just keep practicing. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um, I think it's just one of those things where you have, you really just have to do what speaks to your heart. I mean, Maybe you went to arts. Maybe that your people that you were talking about went to art school and they just realized that it didn't speak to their heart. Maybe it spoke to their heart for some time. Mm-hmm. But I think true artists never stray too far from what they're called to do. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get I'm out. Sure you figure know, out what to yeah, do. Like it. there's no where's where's the market? You know who's hiring? Who's hiring for photo- photographers? Yeah. When when and this is like while I'm in school, like. Ink's getting rid of all the photographers because any reporter can use their iPhone. Oh, gosh. So, man, I'm talking, like, I was already always struggling with, like, why are you going to art school? And then, like, in the middle of your major, you're like, wait, everybody stop. Slow down. Clip art, man. Like, you know, yeah. stuff like clip art. Like, it's great. But, like, things that make it accessible, you know, can, can really, like, mess with people like me mm-hmm. when you get out of school. Like, do I keep trying? That you raises know? an interesting like, question because do they, in art school, do they, is there any courses or any dialogue about how do you come out of here and Mm -hmm. make money Mm -hmm. do you go are you allowed opportunities to uh, partner with and speak with art gallery owners and see like exactly how it's done on the business side or whatever other experimental artists that make money and make a living off of it See, there was like a professional practice course i wish it was departmentalized like i wish there was one specifically for photo because graphic design in itself like i feel like is professional mm-hmm. practice because yeah. you're only making things for other people right yeah it's not like what are you designing for yourself today jason it's it's like how do you make other people talk on oh that's the rough on part. a piece of paper right and yeah. like uh for everything else man like where's that where's that push you know where is it so for for most other things people would show up and be like yo don't turn down any opportunity yeah. jump on everything I'm a painting major. Now I'm working with a puppet dude, like a dude that makes puppets. Like yeah. you know, you don't know where it's gonna go. Just just keep going. And that I mean, I, I've been all over the place, man. Like yeah. I was I was working at an art gallery. Imagine that is a great nonprofit uh, organization that supports artists with disabilities. Oh, cool. Um, here in Kansas City, that is that is a beautiful program. Great part of my life. Amazing artists. Uh, one of their guys, Johnny Bice, I think has the current billboard art up right now and it is i mean that place that place was beautiful and for me it was like ooh, an art gallery you know and yeah. and and some teaching and just man just like putting something i i learned to use 
And then after that, man, I mean, you're just grabbing it with what you can. And I, I, I had a friend work for uh, a place called Empress and got a job there. I mean, just because it had anything to do with, like, anything creative, man. Yeah. And right now it's just trying to, I think a lot of artists being resourceful. And if I could pull from my work and make cool stuff, I'll, I'll do it for a bit, man. But yeah. I think that being an artist is a viable option, but I don't think it schools is. help much by not discussing that no, aspect of it. they don't. Kind of, and it, yeah, no, I I agree, and I also, what I said earlier, I think it's also really hard, man, because it is it is constantly changing. Like, what are they really going to tell you, besides like it sucks out there, man? There's well, there's, there's like there's got to be a way to be honest. Otherwise, you're just taking kind of people's are. money, you, right? Yeah, nope, yeah, and not yeah. disclosing the fact that yeah. okay, for it's it's like trying to be an NBA player. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that much different from that. I'm, one in, one in a hundred people make it. Maybe successfully as an artist, people that came out of high school wanted to be a professional artist that that don't end up being graphic designers. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it, yeah, I don't know, and at least in photography, and I and I could be being very unfair, but I know a lot of people that are like, I bought this camera, I did this thing, I'm not a photographer. You can't do that with a lot of other stuff. Yeah. I can't like, hey, I YouTubed how to like change, do this thing. I'm an electrician now. Right, <laughs> it right. doesn't really happen, but it's so easy with art, and that's not. It's not the most fair conversation. I can't say that like, you, you can only call yourself an artist if you've had all the fucking education and you, and you went to school. But man, it also has to mean a little something at some, at, right. at some point to somebody. Because, man, I've, I've sacrificed. I've, I've been like, ooh, 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 what are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? Are you going to make money off this? Or are you going to go? This is your dreams. You've watched enough yeah. Disney. You've seen enough Pixar. Yeah. Tom Hanks has to be real, man. You know, and it's, it's you know, yeah. the reality is it's not like that. It's but in case, hard. See, man, like you can at least meet people that are in that same situation because yeah. your situation isn't unique. Mm -hmm. My situation is not at all unique, not even close. We're all out here grinding. But if you're right? open and you're you're hungry, you know, like you two, like it's easy to just meet people to at least keep that going, man. Because just talking to you and your friend, right? Mm -hmm. To me, that makes being an artist worth it. Because yeah. I've at least accepted, I'm not gonna get rich. I, I, I'm not going to get rich. Ma ma making art for me is, is for a lot of people, expression, mm -hmm. outlet, right. escapism, whatever you want to call it. You hope, Coping. you hope some people love it. I mean, because school was school, man. Right. School was school. You know, it's all forest and, and deadlines and timelines and criteria. After that, like, what do you have to say? Why do you care about putting something up on a wall? Why do you care about what anyone has to say about it? Why is that important to you? Mm. Do you have anything to say? And I and what we talked about at the beginning, I'm stories. I'm just yeah. looking for stories, man. I right. mean, I, I get political sometimes, but I'm not much of a like, do you get it, artist? I'm not much of a <laughs> hard political statement. I, 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 and this is all. This is much more design stuff, you know. But mm -hmm. but but for me, it goes back to like what you were talking about because I think about where I was when I got it, mm -hmm. where I was when I saw it, where was all the other times so I saw it. I was seeing that makes it feel maybe how that intro music, just hearing that little like. They're hearing a preview. Like, you know a recorded tape so well, you know the previews. Like, what do you do with all that? All that feeling? You gotta put it... You gotta make it into something. Yeah. And if you wanna share it with someone, because, like, because they dig on that, too. Like, yeah. how do you properly share it? And, like, for me, that's kinda like... This is a jumping off point. And, I mean, I don't know where it's going. You kinda never do, I guess, but... Yeah, yeah, I think you just gotta roll with it. It's just an expression. For me, art is... For one thing, I just think that life is very short. And for me, art has given me so many profound aha moments throughout my life and growing up and movies and music and all these things that expressed to so me and taught joy. me what the human condition yeah. was about. That for me, as an artist and one, someone that wants to make artistic things, for me, it's important to express those profound messages you know, of love, of loss and tragedy and comedy and humor and all these things. And do it in a way that's just interesting and profound that mm -hmm. reaches people. Which is like when you were saying photo or film. Yeah. You know, film can, I'm an emotional man. Film can make me cry, you know, and, and it does often. And it's like the art I love is like I want to I want, I want to get all that, you know. I want the, I want everything. I want the whole story. I want the, the, the climax. And I want, the, I want it all. I want it all in there. And, it, and I think trying to, trying to shove that into some art, at least for me, is like where my passion kind of lies you know what i mean and like for the, like that vhs stuff it's like how do you um, say the whole thing 
Well, that's great, man. Thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight and having this discussion. Uh, we're really interested in that message and hearing from local artists and hearing about their history and what drives them, what motivates them. And how you got to where you're at, because I think the misconception a lot of times is that when people are doing something they're really passionate about, mm -hmm. like the road was easy, they knew what they wanted, they got it, like everything came to them at once, and that's just, we're really here to talk about how that's not the case a lot of times. Like we're all out here, you know, trying to make our way, and there have been obstacles for all of us, and, and there's a community and a way to do everything, so behind yeah like behind every artist you see is a person who desperately 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 wants you to buy something <laughs> <laughs> right. or at least talk about it you know um but you know casey's a good place for you it is it's a great yeah. place for it. i mean it's, i saw you guys man i sold a couple things Doesn't well for me to me, to me it's even deeper than that it's just like allowing like please allow me to operate outside of the system of a nine-to-five job yeah and I feel like that's what an artist and I believe that people in their spirit deserve that you know if that's in their spirit and in their soul to operate outside of that why why spend your life doing something that you're not meant to do and if they make something that people can appreciate then that I mean it's just to me that's awesome oh, but anyways fun. thank you so much yeah. for joining us uh, you want to share where, uh, where people can find you where they can find um, your work you know I'm, I'm becoming a little more organic as an artist uh, you know you can find me on Instagram it's uh, it should be JJ Kamato JJ C-O-M-O-T-T-O -T -T -O. but you know a lot like how I met uh, Pat and Ruby um, Volps Bastille is an artist is an art gallery off of uh, oh, God, 18th and Locust 18th and Locust uh Studio mate of mine, Mark Allen, is having a show this Saturday. I don't know the time, but I swear if you show up around six, it should be cool. Um, yeah, I, you know, I encourage go out first Fridays, come by. I I try to be there um, on most first Fridays. For man, honestly, for those opportunities, you know, you never know when you yeah. meet someone that resonates with what you're doing and what that might lead to. And um, and I'm, you know, I don't know, like. I'm down if people, you know, get ideas for custom work, you know, anything. I, I don't know. Just come out. Check out his work, guys. Come out. Yeah. Uh, Jason's amazing. He's, <laughs> as you can tell, he's really fun to talk to. So definitely go and meet him, shake his hand, and see what kind of stuff he's working on. So, But thanks again for tuning in to the Relinials. I'm Pat. And I'm Ruby. We'll see you next time.